Good morning, neighborhood kids. Are you ready for another story from God's word? Did any of you read ahead in Exodus 11 to see what that 10th plague was all about? Uh, We are finally to the point today where we're going to see God rescue his people, the Israelites, from this foreign country of Egypt and bring them towards the promised land. Why don't you turn in your Bibles right now to Exodus chapter 11. Previously in our story, God had brought nine different plagues on the land of Egypt, all for the purpose of showing that he, the one true God, is much more powerful than the little g-gods that Egypt worshipped. Remember, they worshipped the God of the river and the sun and the land. And each time Moses and Aaron had gone to Pharaoh and asked that the people be allowed to let go, Pharaoh said, yes, and then he changed his mind and said, no. He hardened his heart against God, which means he didn't believe in God. And as our story ended last week, Pharaoh had just had enough of Moses and Aaron, and he said, I never want to see you again. And Moses and Aaron were kind of glad to not have to go back to Pharaoh, I imagine. So in Exodus 11, verse 1, we read these words. Now the Lord had said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on the Pharaoh and on Egypt. And after that, he will let you go from here. And when he does, he will drive you out completely. Skip down to verse four. And it says, this is what the Lord says. About midnight, I will go throughout Egypt and every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh to the firstborn son of the slave and of the cattle as well. There will be wailing or loud crying, and then Pharaoh will say to leave Egypt. But first, you must prepare. Well, you know, if you're going on a trip, you probably pack a suitcase, and you get together your favorite snacks and some games and toys and things to keep you occupied. You probably bring around your favorite water bottle, and you get ready to go. And God gave the Israelites a list of things that they had to do to get ready to go. That list is in chapter 12. The first thing they were to do was to go ask their Egyptian neighbors to give them gold and silver jewelry and dishes and clothes and linen. And does that sound kind of crazy? The Bible says that God made the Israelites favorable to the Egyptians, meaning God planned and made it. So the Egyptians said yes when they were asked and they blessed the Israelites with all kinds of things to take with them. And then... On the 10th day of that month, they were to take a lamb. It had to be a perfect lamb. It could have been a sheep or a goat. And they were to take care of that lamb in their house until the 14th day. And then at twilight on the 14th day, they were to slaughter or kill that lamb. And they were to take some blood from the lamb and they were to put it on the doorposts of their house. And perhaps a father and a son went out there to do that. Then they were to take that lamb and roast it for dinner and eat it with bitter herbs like parsley and unleavened bread. We call that matzah. We enjoy that sometimes. And it was to be a very special meal that they would remember for some time to come. And then this is really interesting. They could not have any leftovers from that meal. They had to eat every bit of it right then. And here's how they had to come to the table for dinner. They had to be dressed in their clothes. They needed to have their coat on and their shoes on and their bags packed and be ready to leave. And then eat very quickly. On this same night, the Bible says, the angel of the Lord would come over Egypt. And the angel of the Lord would pass over houses that had the blood on the doorposts. But where there was no blood on the doorposts, that firstborn son would die. Can you think of some other blood that we talk about that can save us? I hope you thought of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. Passover which is the event that we're talking about here, was a picture of what is to come, that Jesus would die as that perfect lamb of God for our sins, and his blood would take away our sin. 
Let's make one more connection. You guys remember the story of Adam and Eve, and when they were in the garden, they sinned, and they made themselves clothes out of leaves. And then God killed an animal and made clothes for them out of the skins. Blood had to be shed for their sin then too. You know, the only way that we can be saved from our sin is through faith in Jesus. Can you think of our Bible verse this month? It says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father <laughs> except through me. You know what? That is so true for us today, too. Only faith in Jesus Christ can save us. Well, let's go back to Egypt here. They are in Egypt. Pharaoh has lost his son, and he tells the Israelites, get out of my land. And they go. They were ready. They grab their things, and they go out into the desert surrounding that beautiful land of Goshen where they have been. And by daytime, it says there was a cloud that was like God, and he was leading them where to go. And at nighttime, it looked like a pillar of fire as they went through the desert toward the Red Sea. Well, what did Pharaoh do? He changed his mind again. He realized he had just let over two million people leave his country. And he gathered his army, and the Bible says 600 of his best chariots to follow after the Israelites. And Moses saw what was happening, and he said these words to the Israelites. He said, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Do you think they were afraid? Oh, they probably were when you hear all of those chariots coming after you. But Moses told them to put their trust in God and that God would take care of that situation. And he did. Let's listen how. 